Jurassic Park the game. Have you played it? Well, really, this episode should probably be called Have You Watched It? Because Jurassic Park the Game really isn't a game. It's more of a movie with random, pointless quick time events. I mean, well, does this even qualify as a quick time event? I mean, he's walking. You are literally simulating walking. Not using a joystick like most games, you're literally hitting buttons to simulate him stepping on the ground. And this isn't the only scene like this. There are many occasions throughout the game where the buttons you're pushing are seem completely pointless. It's almost like the developers made a story and, like, oh yeah, this is supposed to be a game. I know Telltale Styles is supposed to be point-and-click adventures, but this is well, this is a little below their usual standards. I mean, the choices you make don't even matter. I mean, no matter what choices you choose, it's all going to come out to the same conclusion in the end. It just might take you longer to get there. With the exception of one choice, which I can't tell you because it will spoil it. fighting for the revolution in Chile. It's all I have of his. Please give it back. I ain't stupid, lady. You want to try again? The problems with this game range beyond just its lack of gameplay. It can also be rather glitchy, where there'll be some random lags that make it very hard to continue, and sometimes you'll hit the buttons and the game just won't register it at all. In fact, there's one level, at least on the 360 version, I think it's still doable on the PS3 and PC, that no matter what, you will always get a silver medal on that level. You cannot get a gold. It will always register one of the movements as a miss, no matter how perfect you are. So if you're a completionist, be aware of that. If you get a silver on that level, you can call it 100% complete. The good news is it doesn't affect any achievements. We could be here all day and I could tell you all the little nitpicks I have at this game, things it doesn't do right. But that's not what this channel's for. This channel's made to highlight some of the lesser known games that I own that I want to share with people. So this game has to do something right if I like it enough to share it. And what it does right is the plot. The story is very well done as per Telltale's norm, so they got that down. She doesn't know anything she doesn't need to know. The plot starts out with various subplots that all come together in the center. You have Nima Cruz and Miles Chadwick, who were hired by Dodson to recover the dinosaur embryos in the case that Nedry failed, in which you've seen the movie, he did, as well as Park Veterinarian and his daughter Jess, who pretty much just end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. The opening scenes for these two groups actually takes place during the movie. In fact, you actually see the characters from the movie leave the island without them. Once they realize some people were left behind, InGen sends in a rescue team, which I call subplot number three, to come get them off the island. Each group has to deal with their various dino drama before meeting up with Dr. Sorkin at her lab. Sorry that that's very vague, but so far the only thing this game has going for it is the plot, and I really am trying not to spoil anything. This meeting place is where you can unlock one of my favorite achievements. Achievement known as Dropping Eaves is to overhear all of Dr. Sorkin's conversation. That doesn't sound very exciting, but why is it my favorite? Because this is the only achievement I have in my car that I unlocked while going to the bathroom. Is this your daughter? Yeah, my youngest, Jess. If you want to take this as an indication on how easy this game is, you can. Almost all of the achievements you can gather just by playing through the game normally and the ones that you generally have to go out of your way for are very simple. So if you want an easy thousand gamer score, or whatever the PlayStation equivalent is, here you go. If you're also a completionist and just looking for something to add to your collection, trying to get a gold medal on all the levels isn't too bad, except for that one glitch one. To get a gold medal, you have to complete a level without slipping up. While well, I wouldn't necessarily call these easy, they're not all that difficult either. They're a good middle ground. Most of the difficulty in this game, though, comes from the random unresponsive moments, as mentioned earlier. And if you're not a completionist, it is still a good story, so if you're at least familiar with the original Jurassic Park movie, it might still be worth your time to pick up. If anything, the game's pretty cool as you get to see an expansion of the original park. Do you see that, Jurassic World? Telltale had the Mosasaur first. Come on. The sooner we get to the coast, the sooner One thing you really do need to be aware of if you're going to play this game is the death scenes. They all take place off-screen in order to keep a T-rating, but some of them I found rather disturbing. I think the one that got to me most was if you died on the roller coaster. And yes, there was a roller coaster. If you screwed up, the daughter would get killed right in front of her father's face and just really unnerved me. Although it provided excellent motivation not to mess that level up. On the other end of the spectrum, though, there's the part in the beginning when they come across Nedry's dead body and don't even seem to care. You like your sweets. Hey, Gordito. <laughs> she called him little fatty. 
So, Jurassic Park the game. There's not really any gameplay, it's very glitchy, there's some random frame rate drops, the choices you make don't really matter, and the death scenes can be kind of disturbing. But you know what? The plot is fantastic, and it was an easy completion, so for me, it was still worth it. But then again, I'm probably slightly biased, because I love the Jurassic Park franchise. I mean, I drive around with the official soundtrack in my car. But if you're not a huge fan of the franchise, I can still recommend this game to you if you want an easy completion or just looking for a good story, as long as you're at least somewhat familiar with the first movie and you can get over the fact that there's like no gameplay. According to the tracker, he's not even close. As for everyone else, I can't recommend it to you. This, this is what's gonna make us both rich. So that's Jurassic Park the game. There might not be much to it, but I'm happy to have it in my collection. If you want a better Jurassic Park game, keep an eye out for Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. That's one of my favorite games that I own, and if I can get my disc to work again, I will definitely be putting it on this channel. And bye everyone, keep playing those lesser known games. The man isn't coming. Let's go find him.